I was a flower growing wild and free All I'd want is you to be my sweet honeybee And if I was a tree growing tall and green All I'd want is you to shade me and be my leaves All I want is you, will you be my bride Take me by the hand and stand by my side All I want is you, will you stay with me Hold me in your arms and sway me like the sea Tall, the rumble of your water would be my call If you were the winter, I know I'd be the snow Just as long as you were with me when the cold winds blow All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side All I want is you, will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and sway me like the sea If you were a wink, I'd be a nod If you were a seed, well, I'd be a pod If you were a floor, I'd wanna be the rug And if you were a kiss, I know I'd be a hug All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side All I want is you, will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and sway me like the sea If you were the wood, I'd be the fire If you were the love, I'd be the desire If you were a castle, I'd be your moat And if you were an ocean, I'd learn to float All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side All I want is you, will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and sway me like the sea That's it, and around there. Hug together a bit more, guys. Get your straws, Cool, good. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you. 
afternoon, everybody. Family, friends, bride and groom. Welcome to Rivervale Barn on this very special occasion to celebrate the marriage of Darren and Lucy. If I may take a moment to introduce ourselves, my name is Denise Powell and my colleague today is Phil Dunford. We are both registrars for Hampshire and are delighted to be part of this happy occasion. I will have the great pleasure and privilege of guiding Darren and Lucy through their vows and promises today. Whilst Phil has the important role of preparing both the legal and historic written record of this marriage. The civil ceremony is the exchange of vows by means of two declarations. In their first, our couple will state that they are free to marry, and in the second, make their contracting marriage promises to one another. Before we continue with the ceremony, it is required that our couple state their full names. So to ensure that we have the right people here today, could you please state your full names to everyone gathered here? And we start with our groom, please. Darren David Wise. Thank you. And our beautiful bride, Lucy Ann Harriman. Oh, I'm glad to see you smile. <laughs> <laughs> you smile. It's a, it's a happy occasion. It has long been the tradition for a family member to escort the bride to the wedding ceremony, and today Tony is fulfilling that tradition by escorting Lucy to join Darren. Would you like to be upstanding for a very important question, please? Are you happy to signify in public your approval for the marriage? To welcome Darren into your family and wish them both happiness in your, their future together. Thank you very much, Darren. Sorry, thank you very much, Tony, for escorting <laughs> your daughter in the traditional way. This place in which we are met, River Bell Barn, has been duly sanctioned according to law for the celebration of marriage. This is a unique day for Darren and Lucy one that they wish to share with you, their family and their friends. We are privileged to witness what is at heart a very private moment as two people who love one another commit themselves to a future together. Darren and Lucy, before you are married, I have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows you're about to make. Marriage in this country means the union of two people voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of all others, and it provides love, friendship, help and comfort in times of joy and in any times of difficulty. Marriage is not to be entered into lightly, nor lightly put to one side. Well, yeah, I can speak loudly. <laughs> if any person here present knows of any lawful impediment as to why this marriage should not take place, they should speak now, and will ignore infants. <laughs> I think we're safe to carry on. Yep. Yeah. We're going to have your first reading now, so would you like to come over and sit? Yeah. Please sit down. Today, and I would like to invite Sarah and Haley to take my place and give us our first reading. Thank you. <coughs> Pam Ayres, yes, I'll marry you, my dear, with a few amendments. Yes, I'll marry you, my dear, and here's the reason why. So I can push you out of bed when the baby starts to cry. And if we hear a knocking and it's creepy and it's late, I hand you the torch you see, and you investigate. Yes, I'll marry you, my dear. You may not apprehend it, but when the Sky TV goes, it's you that has to mend it. You have to face the neighbour, should their dog bark and whine, and if another man gives me the eye, you'll realise it's you that will always be mine. Yes, I'll marry you, my dear. You're virile and you're lean. My house is like a pigsty. You can help to keep it clean. That romantic break you booked online was organised so well, but when it comes to me arranging, it's you I have to tell. It's you who has to work the drill and put up the curtain track. 
And when I've got PMT, it's you that gets the flag. I do see great advantages, but none of them for you. And so before you see the light, I, I do, do, I do, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> and contracting vows. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're able and you don't have children on your laps, please be upstanding to support your couple. I'm now going to ask each of you in turn to declare that you know no lawful reason why you should not be joined together in marriage. So we're going to start with our group. <coughs> Could repeat the words after me, please. I declare. I declare that I know of no legal reason. I know of no legal reason why I, Darren David Wise. Why I, Darren David Wise, may not be joined in marriage. May not be joined in marriage to Lucy Ann Paraman. To Lucy Ann Paraman. I declare. I declare that I know of no legal reason. That I know of no legal reason. Why I, Lucy Ann Paraman, Why I, Lucy Ann Paraman, may not be joined in marriage, may not be joined in marriage, to Darren David Wise. To Darren David Wise. Marriage is not only a legal contract between two people; it marks a milestone in your lives together. It is all about sharing, understanding, and supporting each other's hopes and dreams, and building a loving home together. You've both declared that you're free to marry, so I'll now ask you to enter into the contract of marriage. Could I ask you to turn and face one another, please, and hold all four hands? I ask you to do this because you're about to make a verbal contract before your witnesses, and the vows you make, you make to each other. So, if you can repeat after me, Darren. I, Darren David Wise. I, Darren David Wise. Take you, Lucy Ann Paraman. Take you, Lucy Ann Paraman. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Well, then I, Lucy Ann Paraman. I, Lucy Ann Paraman. Take you, Darren David Wise. Take you, Darren David Wise. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And our bride and groom today have additional vows that they're going to read to each other. I promise to always be there for you, to hold and protect you in good times and bad, to bring you happiness and to offer you support and understanding always. I promise to be faithful to you and to love, cherish and respect you for the rest of our lives. You can pass them now. Thank you. I promise to always be there for you, to hold and protect you in good times and bad, to bring you happiness and to offer you support and understanding always. I promise to be faithful to you and to love, cherish and respect you for the rest of our lives. Marriage is a desire you can hold hands for two people to share themselves with each other. It deepens and enriches every facet of life and calls for trust, honesty and forgiveness. Sometimes there's a need for compromise or to say sorry. May you always be able to confide in each other, laugh together, share moments of peace. Remain the best of friends and remind yourselves often of the love that brought you here today. Could I ask our guest to be seated again, please? <laughs> it's now time for you to exchange vows and rings. The ancient way and, and traditional way of sealing a marriage contract is by the giving and receiving of a ring. A ring is a circle which has no beginning, and no end, and signifies everlasting love. So I believe Ryan has the rings for us, please. If you could please give the first ring to Darren. Thank you. If you'd like to put it on the third finger of Lucy's left hand. And hold it at the knuckle while you repeat after me. I give you this ring. 
Sorry, I'll give you, give you this ring. <laughs> <laughs> it's thrown off. As a sign of my love for you. As a sign of my love for you. And a symbol of my commitment. And it's a symbol of my commitment. Throughout our lives. Throughout together. our lives together. Well done, pop it right on. We have a second ring, please, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. Please place it on the third finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of my love for you. As a sign of my love for you. And a symbol of my commitment. And a symbol of my commitment. Throughout our lives together. Throughout our lives together. May your beautiful rings be a constant reminder to you both of the vows you've made to each other today. <clears throat> I'd like to ask you to come and be seated yeah. again. second reading, I would like to invite Becky forward, please. A Lovely Love Story by Edward Monckton. The fierce dinosaur was trapped inside his cage of ice. Although it was cold, he was happy in there. It was, after all, his cage. Then along came the lovely other dinosaur. The lovely other dinosaur melted the dinosaur's cage with kind words and loving thoughts. I like this dinosaur, thought the lovely other dinosaur. Although he is fierce, he is also tender and funny. He is also quite clever, though I will not tell him this for now. I like this lovely other dinosaur, thought the dinosaur. She is beautiful and she is different and she smells so nice. She is also a free spirit, which is a quality I much admire in a dinosaur. But he can be so distant and so peculiar at times, thought the lovely other dinosaur. He's also overly fond of things. Are all dinosaurs so overly fond of things? But her mind skips from here to there so quickly, thought the dinosaur. She is also uncommonly keen on shopping. Are all lovely other dinosaurs so uncommonly keen on shopping? I will forgive his peculiarity and his concern for things, thought the lovely other dinosaur, for they are part of what makes him a richly characters individual. I will forgive her skipping mind and her fondness for shopping, thought the dinosaur, for she fills our life with beautiful thoughts and wonderful surprises. Besides, I am not unkeen on shopping either. Now the dinosaur and the lovely other dinosaur are old. Together they stand on the hill telling each other stories and feeling the warmth of the sun on their backs. And that, my friends, is how it is with love. Let us all be dinosaurs and lovely other dinosaurs together. For the sun is warm and the world is a beautiful place. Thank you very much, Becky. We'll get it all sorted and then come over. Yeah. <laughs> Marriage is the joining of two people, the union of two hearts. It lives and thrives on the love you give to each other and never grows old. It offers an opportunity for sharing that few other relationships can equal. And we hope that your marriage enjoys the closeness of a couple growing together, but also allows enough distance for you to be individuals. We hope you will back, look back on this day with great happiness and the love and affection shared today will continue to strengthen and grow throughout your married life together. And now comes the idea of that. Darren, in the presence of your family and friends, and on this your wedding day, do you take Lucy to love and cherish her for as long as you shall live? I do. And Lucy, in the presence of your family and friends, and on this your wedding day, do you take Darren to love and cherish him for as long as you shall live? I do. You have both made the declarations required by law, and each of you has made with the other a solemn contract. So it now gives me the greatest of pleasures to announce that you are now husband and wife. And why don't you kiss your bride while we celebrate <laughs>
which you missed. So I'd like to redress the balance and introduce you to this young happy couple. Some of you a little bit. 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 Some of you a little bit.
<laughs> Again, fan fantastic day. Um, my daughter, Lucy Marion Darren, to become Lucy Wise. And I couldn't really seriously be happier or prouder than both. My speech may not be totally traditional. Can you hear me back? Pardon? Good. Pardon? Linda. My speech may not be totally traditional, but hopefully it'll be okay. Um, I would like to welcome you all today to this very special occasion. Family of friends of both Lucy and Darren. Some of the lovely wise family we've met, and I'm sure we will have a beer with the rest later. While talking of drink, please raise your glasses to family and friends. A few words about Darren, our new son-in-law. He's a really good bloke. That's that's a lot to say. Great boyfriend, now husband to Lucy. The sort of chap. I don't think people can hear. Sorry, I'm being bossy. Um, I don't think people can hear. Can everybody hear? That's it. Now, good. Okay, right. I'm just thinking it's covering my face. Do you want to put that on? The sort of chap that Darren is was proved to me on the day that he traditionally asked me for Lucy's hand. Some may have heard this story, and I have the photograph to prove it. He called around one Saturday morning, asked the question, and before I answered, he said to prove how much he loved Lucy, took off his jacket to reveal a Tottenham Hotspur football shirt. <laughs> To wear a spur shirt, that proved his love for her. Darren, you have always been our favourite. <laughs> to go the distance and end up here today. You know, please raise your glasses to Darren. <laughs> this has been a fantastic few years for Debbie and myself. Our eldest daughter, her uh, granddaughter Daisy, is nearly 14. Uh, four years ago, Mark, our son, who's on this table here, married um, Michaela at a lovely wedding in Italy. And two years ago, Michaela gave birth to Olivia, the one who always runs around all the time and you know, doesn't stop. <laughs> Last November, Lucy and Darren had Lily, then Leonardo followed just before Christmas. Like buses, nothing for 12 years, then three in a row. <laughs> now, today, absolutely fantastic. You know, at Mark and Michaela's wedding, as father of the groom, I did not have a talking part. I have the opportunity now to say how proud I am of my son, Mark, of the man he has become, and what he has worked hard to achieve. Love you, mate. <laughs> Even though you broke your sister's arm about 15, 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> just before I speak about my daughter Lucy, can I just say that her mum, Debbie, looks absolutely beautiful. Aww. I am very lucky, as she always tells me. <laughs> A toast, please, to my lot. Cheers. My lot. Cheers. Lucy, my little girl. What can I say? I'm overwhelmed with the feelings that I have for her today. 
right? <laughs> she was always been beautiful, but today she is off the scale. So, so beautiful. Lucy was born in Winchester on the 31st of March in 1981. Her natural curly hair took a long time to show. She was born for nearly a year. <laughs> She was a good little girl. She only ate watsits, dry rice krispies, and dry toast for ages. And I'm not sure whether you know this, and I think people that are close to her do, but Lucy has always been a bit of a worry. At school, she always worried that her homework was not good enough. And for exams, we used to, it seemed, revise around the clock. In one school play, there was one particular song that had to be sung exactly right. The play was Jason the Amazing Cup, Technicolor Jason. Dream Coat. Joseph. Oh, Joseph, sorry. Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph. I'm thinking of Jason the Argon. <laughs> Well, we practiced, practiced, and practiced some more. And we still have nightmares about that song. <laughs> I'm not sure of the song's name, but perhaps Lucy can sing a bit of it later on. <laughs> Where's Emma? Emma. Do you remember it? Emma. Emma. I was teach you. Well. They were at school. So perhaps later Emma's on tonight. Emma's the one that told me about it, because I had to text her to say which one was They it. could sing it perhaps later on. <laughs> Lucy did well at school, went to technical college to study hair and beauty, went self-employed and had a chair in a salon. And she was doing very well until she worried that some of the treatments she gave to the older clients could kill her. <laughs> um, you, you will see the examples of her worrying over the next one and a half hours of my speech. <laughs> all of her future jobs were successful. She would be welcomed back to them all. As she is a hard worker, conscientious law, and great fun. Yeah, she really is good fun. Um, always gave 100 percent and everybody loved her. Please raise your glasses to Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people will relate to Lucy's Lucyisms. I don't know whether people or everybody knows about these, but let me name them after the counseling things that she has said which made us all laugh. A couple of examples. Recently, Debbie and Lucy were out shopping. They saw an advert for Kuoni showing a beautiful island resort. Lucy said that perhaps Darren and her could go to Kuoni for their own. <laughs> 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 Kuoni is a travel agent. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, it was funny when I was thinking about it. <laughs> Another years ago. Um, I suspect Lucy was about 10. Lucy was looking at my mum, manicuring her nails. Lucy commented on the lighter parts at the bottom of the nails. What she should have said was, you have really long cuticles, Nana. But what she in fact said was, you have really big testicles, Nana. <laughs> Lucy and me have watched the film Five of the Bride about five times together. Um, I thought the relationship between George Banks and his daughter um, Annie was similar to ours. I just felt, you know, that, that's how they were. We both loved the film. Um, George thought about a barbecue in the garden. And I've got to be honest, I did as well. <laughs> which would have been really good, but this is fantastic. Lucy worries about us all. She worries about me playing squash and racquetball 
and we go on air yearly by the side, we'll get a few drinks around the pubs, um, and we normally do about 10 pubs. Um, and but I think she started worrying a lot more since I'm approaching 50. And I think that's really got her. She worries a lot more since then. I could talk all, all day long about my daughter, but I believe I should start to wrap this up and we should get to the top of the bill, the groom and best man speeches. I've been pleased to be the warm-up act. So, no, 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 not Fisher. So finally, Lucy has always been full of life. She's a bubbly personality. No one can say that she's not on that. She's great company. We've had brilliant holidays, brilliant weekends away, and she's fantastic. Um, lots of laughter, few tears, and I really wish my mum and dad was here to see this. She's really proud of me today. She loves her family, she loves her friends, and all love her in return. She's a fantastic daughter and the best in the world. And the universe. And the universe. <laughs> I would not change her one bit. Beautiful inside and out. Uh, she worries. I still wouldn't change her. I wouldn't change her. Will be a fantastic wife to Darren and is a brilliant mum to Lily. Lucy and Darren, you are made for each other. Look after my little girl, Darren. I know you will. You always have done. <laughs> Can I just say a fantastic couple, and let's please raise our glasses to the bride and groom, Lucy and Darren. Thank you very much. Be getting a gift, but there might be a bit of a delay. <laughs> to 
Save me repeat myself, um, anyone who has sprang from this point on is basically does have a, a gift as well, rather than keep saying it, um, but you will get a gift at the end. Um, thank you to our cute page boys, Theo and Leonardo, Marsha Dan, who is also very cute, <laughs> and, and for my dad for being part usher, part MC, and a great father of the groom. Also, Dad, thanks for not singing any songs during the ceremony. I will do. Thank God the harpist didn't play any Elvis tunes. <laughs> uh, Vicky, thanks for the lovely flowers and all the hard work and time you've put into today. It is massively appreciated. Vicky, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, do you want to do it? So, yeah. Becky, again, for doing just doing so much for us. She's been looking after Lily, doing the superb stage with me, the table plans, helping with the bridesmaids outfits, etc, etc. Thank you so much, Becky. <laughs> Thanks to my mum for always being there for me. Looking over there, she's there. <laughs> Thanks to my mum for always being there for me, no matter what, I'm just Steve for helping us and always being there for my mum. Thank you. For Oh, yeah. <laughs> I should come up and do that in a minute, yeah. Thank you for all your help me today and for being my chauffeur for the day. Something I actually could get used to. <laughs> Lucy's nails look amazing, thanks mum. <laughs> also, I'm not confirmed on an iron who else may or may not have had a manicure for today, but I'm sure their hands are great also. <laughs> Goes well with the town. Thanks to Ryan for being my best man and organising the Lemon Pass tag team. Also, thanks for everything else we've done. And sorry that we have a videographer, as I know the anxiety that has to the speeches. <laughs> my last thank you goes to the two people who, without them, today simply would not have been possible. The two most selfless people I've ever known Lucy's mum and dad, Debbie and Tony. They have provided babysitting, shopping trips, sewing skills, training trips, endless advice, counselling, hundreds and hundreds of phone calls, shoulders to cry on, the list goes on and on, but have just been there for us both every step of the way. Debbie creates the most amazing cakes and is of course responsible for our incredible cake back there. That cake is a product of hours upon hours of hard work and love from Debbie and she has somehow surpassed her usual extraordinary standards and raised the bar even more of that one. The great news is, is that you will get to try it later as well. So yeah, a round of applause for Debbie. Yeah. Thank you. I know at this point I'm in danger of failing the non-mushy goal that I set out to achieve, but I genuinely could not ask for better in-laws and I know how incredibly blessed Lucy feels having them as her mum and dad. Debbie and Tony, thank you so much. This brings me on to my bride, the new Mrs. White. Yeah. 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 Lucy, you look absolutely gorgeous today, but then I knew you would. As you do with these kind of things, I decided to research what makes the perfect person for someone to marry. I came across a philosopher called Nirad Divar, who I think may have actually been Hungarian, which is quite apt. Um, anyway, he had a simple three-point outlook to how someone you marry should be, and it was that they should be your best friend, be the person you absolutely idolise, and the person who gives you the greatest memories. So applying that, I thought about it, and I contemplated, who is the person I always wished was my best friend, who has given me great memories, and who do I idolise above all else? And following that logic, I concluded that that person was Paolo Di Canio. <laughs> I'm only joking, of course. Uh, Paolo, you didn't even turn up for away games, or not, so I definitely don't want to marry him. <laughs> Lucy and I have now been together nearly four years, and in that time we've already shared so much. Holidays, moving in together, buying our house, getting engaged, new nieces, nephews, and of course this amazing little girl here, Lily. Lucy is kind, outgoing, friendly, and beautiful. But for the purposes of this speech, I tried to find some negatives to tell you about. 
as after all, she can't be perfect, her dad is a Spurs fan. <laughs> I had to really scrape the barrel, and all I could really come up with was that she fills up our sky panel with Team Mum, Team Mum OG, 16 and Pregnant, and 16 and Pregnant UK. She also has a soft spot for Scott and Charlie and the neighbours, and at one point was discussing the possibility of walking down the aisle to Scott and Charlie's wedding, so suddenly, by Angry Anderson. Luckily, I talked her out of that one, but I have to apologise because it probably is going to be on the list tonight, yeah. while you're eating dinner. <coughs> With the exception of when Max and Dave fails to get recorded because the planner is school, these are pretty irrelevant negatives, to be honest. So I kept going, to, kept going and the only other thing I've come up with is that she's a massive warrior, like Tony uh, said. This doesn't work that great when planning the wedding, to be honest, and Debbie, Tony and myself have had to feel now to reassure her when things got a bit stressful. But again, she's only like this because she cares so much, and therefore it's not really a negative. So in conclusion, I come back to her only negative is that her dad's a Spurs fan. <laughs> Around March, April or May 2014, I can't be sure, but possibly would be expected to be, we were lying in bed one night and then Lisa really said she loved me for the first time. Trying to play it cool, I left a dramatic long pause and then added the words, I think, before saying I love you too. <laughs> I still say I think I love you as a joke now, but the truth is, I didn't think I actually knew back then and now that I completely love her. Oh yes, I really love completely found the normal she goal at this point, but I'm going to continue because Lucy is my best friend, the one I idolise more than any other, and has already given me the greatest memories of my life. If you have any drink left, well done Tiffany. <laughs> please, uh, please raise your glasses and toast my new wife, Mrs. Lucy Wise. Right, so I've obviously failed on the number she goal, I know. I know you're hungry, I'm in danger of failing on the longevity goal. But just before Ryan takes over, I wanted to say two quick things. Firstly, for those of you who don't know Ryan, he works in a highly technical job and is more than capable of doctoring pictures, video, or any stories. So anything bad about me, you may be about to say, is almost certainly a lie. Secondly, uh, a little anecdote. This little girl, oh, she's gone. Where's she gone? She's there. She's there. That little girl, Lily, doesn't like to go to bed at night, and it can be really difficult to get her off to sleep. Only when she's with Auntie Becky and Auntie yeah. she sleeps. So well, this is, that ties in, actually. Yeah. A few times a week, Ryan will generally call me to tell me about his day at work or something similar. And when he calls, on, and if I'm trying to get Lily to sleep, I'll put him on a loudspeaker, and in less than five minutes, she's out on the line. <laughs> now, I happen to know that his speech lasts for more than five minutes. So good luck, everyone, and good night, Lily. <laughs> Tells. 
about his character. Um, the first of these, like all good fairy tales, starts on Christmas Day. Um, it was uh, probably 1991, I was about six years old. Um, and normally, um, from our aunts and uncles, we would get the uh, bog standard Batman bubble bath. Or, or, or if we were really lucky, maybe uh, Lynx Africa gift set. <laughs> but, but this year, um, yeah, we managed to, to get a bit of get money together between us. Um, and Darren came to me with the idea that we should put our money together, save up for something really special. Um, I'll be honest, I was a little bit sceptical about this at the time. But, you know, we sat down over a couple of glasses of strawberry Nesquik. <laughs> um, discussed terms, came up with a fairly amiable uh, agreement. And yeah, so we, you know, we went in together. A uh, month went by, my birthday came along. I didn't think twice, I shoved all my birthday money straight under the chest of drawers with all the Christmas money. Um, and yeah, and then the months went on, we didn't really think too much about it, the odd little bit of pocket money came in, and then August came around. And now I'm getting very excited, because I know that Darren's birthday is just around the corner. I'm thinking about all the money that's going to come into our fund. I'm thinking about all the great things we're going to spend it on, computer games and bogglings and scale electrics. And, yeah, you can imagine my disappointment the day that his birthday arrived when not only did this guy decide not to honour our agreement, not only did he decide he was going to liquidise the fund, <laughs> but also he decided that every penny in there was his and his alone. <laughs> so that, my advice to you, Lucy, is this, and I appreciate this coming, it's coming fairly late in the day, given that you've already bought a house with him, bore his child, and today someone who advisedly <laughs> married him. But my advice to you is this, just be a little cautious before you enter any financial <laughs> kind of, you know,
kid. Ah, well done, bro. You're coming in. You're going to take your share of the blame. Then I looked at him again. His hair's wet. He's got a towel wrapped around his waist. <laughs> and apparently, he's been in the shower. <laughs> He's got no idea what's been going on. So my nan tells him what Dan and I have been up to, and he looks at us in disgust and shakes his head. What a nightmare. <laughs> so yeah, um, Lucy, they're my, two, they're my two key pieces of advice to you. One, don't, you know, tie yourself too much financial to him. Again, I know that's how you can say, but in my defense, you never asked me before. And two, if he ever mentions anything to do with war bombs, just, yeah, steer clear. Um, given that I've been married myself now for uh, eight years, um, I think that I can probably give Darren some good advice as well. Um, and my advice is this. Just do as you're told. <laughs> To be honest, I'm not sure that I completely agree with that, but that's what Becky told me to say. So, <laughs> Actually, uh, I do have to, to, to thank Darren for one thing. If it wouldn't have been for him, I would never have actually met Becky. Um, after I left school, I decided to spend a couple of weeks, to take a couple of weeks off and just gather my thoughts. Um, nine months later, Darren was getting a little bit pissed off with me rolling out of bed at 3 o'clock every afternoon. So he actually uh, called a recruitment agency, pretended to be me, and the next day I had an interview. Uh, a week after that, I was starting uh, my job at, at NatWest, um, and on the first day there is when I met Becky. I remember that first day very well. I remember walking into this grimy little training room, looking up across, saw this gorgeous, girl and instantly thought, yeah, she's the one for me. Um, her name was Colleen and it turned out she was pregnant. <laughs> so, so I put that to one side and yeah, and then, you know, consolation prize. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> So yeah, Darren, um, yeah, you helped me find out, find my bride. I think you've done a, in all seriousness, I think you've done a, a, a pretty good job of, of finding your own. Um, I think everyone in our family would agree that Lucy is absolutely lovely. Um, you know, she's got her downsides. Um, she seems to fall over quite a lot and maybe cry a little bit too easily at times. You might want to work on that. Um, but yeah, I think we'd all agree that she's lovely. Um, obviously, Bear in mind that the last time one of my siblings got married, it was to Alden, so the bar's not particularly high. <laughs> Just saying. Um, but yeah, Lucy, you look gorgeous today. So do all your bridesmaids, um, uh, even Tiffany, I, I guess. Um, so yeah, I think as well, it's worth saying thank you to um, Lucy and Tony and Debbie for organising today. It's been amazing so far um, and I'm sure it's going to be absolutely great going forward. Um, so all that leads me to do is ask you all to join me in the toast to the new Mr. and Mrs. Wise. Your heart 
heart is all I own And in your eyes you're holding mine Baby, I'm dancing in the dark With you between my arms Barefoot on the cross We're Listening to our favorite song when you said you looked a mess I whispered underneath my breath But you heard it Darling, you look perfect tonight Well, I found a woman Stronger than anyone I know She shares my dreams
Me llamo Juan. Y más. 